light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, moving in the armies. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. Oh. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. He's giving light in our situation. Oh, we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Anything we're going through, he's our way maker. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. And where you are, the hands. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Praise God, I give God thanks for this afternoon. Praise God, I give God thanks for his presence. I give God thanks for guiding us during this week. He's awesome. He's the kings of kings. He's the Lord of lords. We we'll give God thanks for another day of prayer and fasting. We went on or got cut off, but I give God thanks that we're on again in the name of Jesus. The word must go for it today. Praise God in this atmosphere. Would you can declare a shift anywhere you are? Would you can declare a shift? I know that intercessors have been praying this morning. Some have been praying in midday. Some have already prayed. So we're just continuing on this path and a new shift that God is about to do in our lives. In the name of Jesus, he's the kings of kings. You're at work. You might be at school. You might be at home. But anywhere you are, just shift your atmosphere. He's our way maker. He's our promise keeper in this dark world, in this dark age. Today is declared as a dark day, but today is declared as a Holy Ghost day in the name of Jesus. Every darkness is shift out of our environment. Every darkness is shift out of our workplace. Every darkness is shift out of our community. Every darkness is shift out of the schools today. Every darkness will be shift out of our communities, out of our churches, out of our minds at this time. What do you care shift in our minds? He said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I give God thanks for the prayers of Sister Karen Mitchell and those who have prayed earlier. I give God thanks for those who prayed this morning. I give God thanks for those who pray midday. I give God thanks for those who pray during this week. Lord, there's power in prayer. There's something about fasting and prayer to tear down strongholds of the enemy. I thank you, Lord, for all the intercessors who are praying in this watch, Lord. We agree with them at this time. On other platforms, we agree at this time, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, cover us on their blood. Guide us in this week of all our just prayers. Guide us into this new month. It's the last day in October and you deserve the glory. So many things happen in October. Many of us should have been dead and gone, but you cover us. A series of accidents has been happening at this time to our families and to our friends. But God, I thank you for covering them at this time, Lord. Cover our families, cover our friends, cover our community members, our classmates, our workmates, Lord, our pastors, our leaders, our bishops at this time. Every request that was sent on Facebook, we assign angels to them. Those who send requests at this time on WhatsApp, Lord, we assign angels to them. Cover singles today at this time. You're going to release answers to our singles. Cover our marriage couples today. Cover our finances. Cover those who are going to start a new job today. Day. Those who are going to the interviews, job promotion is released. You're giving light in the dark situation today. All of us are going through some turmoil, some dark situation in our bodies, in our families, in our marriages, in our minds, some dark situation happening in our schools. But God, you are light in the darkness. And I declare, I declare that light will touch down into the earth realm today. 
in the name of Jesus, we bind distracting spirit. We come against lying spirit, jealous spirit, hate spirit at this time. Every move of the flesh will come against it, Lord. Let flesh be decreased in this atmosphere in the name of Jesus. So you can get the glory out of our situation. Thank you that many are rebuilding their altars. That will continue to rebuild our altars. We we'll continue to stay in the presence of the Lord and remain at our altar. We will not move until they tell us to go left or right. They release the answers at the altars today at this time. Shut down every demonic altar. Yes, I thank you for covering every intercessors and warriors who are listening, those who are on Online, offline, those who are about to come on, those who are on Zoom at this time, we are sending angels to them. I thank you Lord for shifting our atmosphere at this time. We declare that this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a powerful day. It's an anointed day. It's a Holy Ghost fire day. It's a day where miracles are going to take manifestation. Souls will be baptized in the name of Jesus. Families will be restored. Marriages will be restored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Love for our couples will be restored today. Healing will take place in the bodies of people. Man will be covered at this time and be transformed by a powerful anointing. I just want to say thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We give God thanks for each and every person that was able to come on. God bless you, Jay Clark, Sister Stacey Monroe, DJ. God bless you, McDonald. God bless you, Evangelist Coda, for joining in. God bless you, General Jackson. God bless you all. And we give God thanks for Lady Karen Mitchell today. Praise the Lord. It was a plan. I... The Holy Ghost had me to do fasting and prayer today. I had many setbacks to do it today, but it has to be done in the name of Jesus. And, you know, I would just like to ask Sister Lady Mitchell to do a presentation on the origin of Halloween. I saw her do a presentation. I didn't get time to read it. But, um, you know, this is an important information where I realize that persons are taking it for granted. It's not something for us as Christians to, you know, um, embrace and love. You know, it's something for us to, you know, observe and realize that this is not a plan of God. It's a plan of the enemy. So I would really like to educate persons, you know, the origin of Halloween and so on. And we're on fasting and prayer today because a soul can be saved. Somebody can get their healing today. Somebody can get their miracles. Anything can happen at the altar. Anything can happen in the presence of the Lord. Anything can happen. I know we're closing out on this theme, rebuilding the altars. The Lord still have me on that. And you can share the link with anybody, you know, um, and our subtopic in my background is giving God your sacrifice. And that's what the Lord has been telling me. Oh, God bless you, missionary. Um, Brooks, thanks for joining me all the way from UK. God bless you. I pray you'll be blessed on our platform today. God bless you, um, Pastor Brooks and Lady Brooks all the way in England. God bless you for joining in. And our scripture is taken from Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 to two and I just declare in the atmosphere I beseech you therefore bridging by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what it is good and acceptable perfect will of God as sister Stacey Monroe sister Karen Mitchell and evangelist Coda can witness that we have been on that presentation of rebuilding the altars and we pray that we can do a part two because you know there are so many things to learn about the altar you know I was even though I pray a lot but I learn more and we learn every day that you know some persons don't have an altar much less to empower them to pray more so you have to have an altar you have to create your altar as I said whether in your bedroom in your bathroom in your living room you know, anywhere you can create an altar, you need an altar in your family. And that's why there's so many demonic doors open to our family or marriages and ministry. And even those of us who are um who are intercessors and so on, because we're going all out, you know, with 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 the mandate that God has placed upon our life. The enemy will send attacks. Doesn't mean that our life is a perfect life. No, we go under a lot of attacks because we're the one going forward and petitioning on, on behalf of others. But the Lord has mandated us to pray. The Lord has mandated us to care in this prayer mantle. And we will continue as a young people to do what the Lord has placed in our spirit to do because we know we're covered under the blood of Jesus. So I pray that somebody will empower. It is encouraging us to beseech you. He's begging us by the mercies of God that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. It's not God's service, it's our service. When we give our sacrifice to the Lord, you know, he will 
allow us to, 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 he will bless us if we give ourselves to the Lord. So he wants flesh to be denied. And that's why we're on fasting and prayer because there's power in fasting and prayer because there are certain things that is going on that we can't fight physically because the scripture says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in our places. And there are spiritual wickedness in our places. And you don't need no discernment to see it. You don't have to ask nobody it upon the news, it upon social media. It's all over the place so we're not naive and ignorant to the devices of the enemy we are well equipped because everybody have an iphone everybody have a smartphone everybody have a tablet and a laptop everybody's watching news so you're seeing the wicked spirits operating in front of your face but we are here at the altar to declare and declare the things of god yes it may be a, um a lot of things may be happening and darkness is taking place, but there's a light in the darkness, as I sung earlier. There's anointing that God placed in us, and the Holy Ghost lives in us. And that's why our body is now the temple of the living God. Back then, they used to have to offer animals and sacrifice at the altar, you know, with animals and so on. And, you know, you have to beg the priest to petition on your behalf. But I give God thanks that he died on the cross for our sins, that we have legal access, and we can have access to the Lord anytime at the altar, or altar that we build, and the Holy Ghost is living in us. So it says, um, holy and acceptable which is our reasonable service the word holy means purity you know staying in the presence of the lord the same thing that adam and eve had they got the glory of god they were dwelling in the garden of eden where purity is where holiness is and because of pride and disobedience it was taken away from them because they sinned and you know darkness took over their life and 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 the Lord died the cross for our sins and gave us the same access that other men Eve have, the Holy Ghost dwelling in us. How we do we maintain the Holy Ghost in us? We have to go and fast and pray and read the word so we can maintain the anointing in us. A one-day Sunday service can keep the anointing that you have. Uh, um, a one-two chat prayer say, God, cover me and their blood and you're gone through the door. It's not enough. God wants to dwell with us. He wants to have a relationship with us. Yes, many times persons send prayer requests. But, you know, as intercessors, we sacrifice our time and pray for you. But you have to come into agreement for the deliverance of your soul and your family. You have to have your own personal relationship with God. We can have seminars. We can have presentation. We can war for you. We can do everything for you. But you have to know God for yourself. Pastor and bishop can motivate you for so much and no more. But you have to know God for yourself. When attacks come upon your family and, and upon your friends, sometimes you have no prayer word for call upon when the enemy comes like a flood. Sometimes you can't have time for call pastor or bishop when something happens. You have to know God for yourself. Our leaders need prayer. They need more prayer than me. You know why? They're, they're on the front line. So this is not a time to take our salvation for granted. The enemy don't like us. So we have to stay at the altar. We have to give our bodies as a temp our temple as a living sacrifice. Our bodies are the living sacrifice. And I remember when Sister Karen said, also, when you have an altar, your body is also an altar because why? We're giving our body as a sacrifice to God. When you give yourself as a sacrifice to God, you allow him to fight your buckles. You allow him to do what you want him to do. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted upon the earth. You know why I can be exalted? Because I can get the glory out of your situation. I don't know the dark situation you're going through today, but just remember, he's giving a light in your dark situation if you let go build your altars let go and present your body as a living sacrifice my weakness is not sister karen weakness my weakness is not evangelist code um weakness my weakness is not sister stacy monroe weakness right all of us have some weakness or something that we're struggling with but we have to look into ourselves and be honest and be truthful and tell god i saw you go and i saw you go god help me you don't need no, you don't have to speak you know, no pretty word. You don't have to speak no other language. You don't have to study nothing for talk to God. You don't talk to God by intellectually, inter intellectual um, way. We talk to God by the anointing that sits in us. And God is not a God of confusion. When God say A, you're done. When God say B, when God say left, when God say right, I hit that and it's done. As I'm rolling back in 1 Kings chapter 18, when um Elijah got the mandate to go to the Israelites and said, Rebuild the altar that has been broken, Israelites. Is it, it the good thing I like about the Israelites? They did not murmur. And never cuss out Elijah and say, we are talking about rebuild altar. You can't give them nothing, you know, and give an attitude. They just humble themselves and say, you know what? We are Sir Bell. We should not serve Bell, you know. That's where the Lord wants us to come and be honest. We're not supposed to serve this. Let me drop it off. 
and come to God. And that's what Elijah um, and the Israelites did. Then just obey with the man of God standing. They rebuild the altar and they rebuild it according to the 12 tribes of Israel. And anything Elijah said, they did it because they could feel that this is a true man of God. And not until they turn to God, then Elijah could have petitioned on behalf of the people and say, and pray to the Lord and behalf of Israel and the fire from, from, from heaven and consume the sacrifice. So when the fire of God consume your sacrifice, God get the glory. And that's how the Israelites saw Baal and said, no man, Elijah God are the true and living God. Why would, I, why would I worship Baal? That's how sin does sin blind you and make you worship false God and put other gods before, God, um, before him. If anything can be an idol, you cannot put anything before God. If Baal be Baal, serve Baal. If God be God, serve God. If a God you serve, go all out for God because God is a jealous God and God wants all the glory. If no one share no other glory, nobody else. He wants all the glory. So, um, just continue to just continue to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth in the name of Jesus. He's awesome in this place. He's the kings of kings. And when you continue in that path of giving God your sacrifice, then the Lord, you will see God showing up in your secret situation. But what are you sacrificing to the Lord so he can get the glory out of your situation? I sang the song earlier. He's a light in the darkness. That is who he is. And if anybody going through any dark situation today, he's a light in your darkness. These are my encouraging words. So um, I pray that somebody is encouraged. If you need prayer, you can send a prayer request. Praise God. And we will continue to pray. And at this time, I'm handing over to Lady Karen Mitchell to do a presentation on Halloween. And she does go as she's led by the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. If you're led to pray, you can pray. If you're led by the Holy Ghost, you're free to do so. We're right here, Sister Curie, in Jesus' name. Yeah, to God be the glory. Thank you so much, Evangelist Leota. My God, God bless you tremendously we give god thanks we give god honor we give god praises you know this is something that i'm recognizing that over the years we have been doing well with praying against this spirit but this year the frequency has been higher than it has ever been and then the next thing that i'm recognizing is that we are praying prior to halloween we may pray on the day of halloween but we forget that there are two other days or some of us don't know that there are two other days that's associated with it. And I believe that is why, Sister Lee, the, the Lord wants this presentation to go out the way that it is going out right now. Because we have to pray. We have to continue to pray against this. Just before I start, I'm going to pray once more. Hallelujah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We're asking you, Lord God Almighty, to precede us, God. We know that the enemy doesn't want your people to know, Lord Jesus, these informations, God, because what it does, Lord God Almighty, is give us, Lord Jesus, a better understanding of how to pray, Lord God. Father, our prayer needs to be with clarity and precision, Lord Jesus. And so the enemy knows, Lord God Almighty, that for a lack of knowledge, your people perish, Lord Jesus. But when we have the God knowledge, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, to withstand the agenda of darkness, Lord God Almighty, then we are victorious, Lord Jesus Almighty, that principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness, Lord Jesus, are powerless. So even now, God, we pull them down. We pray that the frequency be loosed over these platforms, Lord God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that the very atmosphere, Lord God, will be loosed, God, in the name of Jesus, mighty God. I pray, Lord God, that there will be no resistance in the spirit but that your people lord jesus will open up their hearts god to do right lord god almighty in the name of jesus and so we thank you even now god we bless you even now we honor you and we exalt you in the mighty name of jesus christ hallelujah i want to greet you once more evangelist lee i want to greet you elder mac i want to greet you evangelist coda and all god's wonderful people that are on with us i greet you all today I greet you facebook in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. So we'll be looking at um, very briefly what is Halloween. Halloween is the observance of the relationship between the living and the dead in some cultures and traditions. The observance evolved from ancient rituals marking the transition from summer to winter. So it was an observance that these cultures or traditions observed that in ancient rituals that marked a transition from summer to winter was just two seasons that they really pointed out like that because summer incorporated um, spring 
and winter really began for them in fall, thereby associating it with transformation, which is still a central theme of the holiday. It is known in some cultures as the Day of the Dead, that's according to the Aztecs and the Mexicans or in Mexico. In China and Asia, it is known as a tomb sweeping day. In the Ittite culture, which we call Galatia, Celt or Gael, it is Sowin. And in Catholicism, it is All Allah's Eve, All Saints Day, and All Souls Day. All these marks. This observance that evolved from ancient rituals to transition from summer to winter. That's the purpose of Halloween. Halloween may have started with the Ittites, who we know as present day North Central Anatolia, right? That's in Turkey. They celebrated seasons, they who celebrated by seasons their gods as they moved from spring to fall, same summer to winter. They had thousands of gods that they would build bonfires to. So that is why you will see a fire being built and, you know, people are, are burning like marsh and, and um, marshmallows and chocolate. And they call them um, smart. I can't remember the right name of it. I don't want to, to, to give um, wrong information, but it's a mixing of the chocolate. If anybody knows the right name of it. It's chocolate and marshmallows. They'll burn that over the fire, right? So that's what they would build bonfires and do. They'd bring produces for the feast and sweets. So you'd have like pumpkin, which is what was known to be produced during the fall and winter time, corns and certain grains, right? They would dance and offer rituals too as they invoked the dead or departed souls and gods to look favorably upon the fall crop. So when they were dancing and you know doing their little chantings, these were not things that they were doing in celebration of the season, but they were doing it to invoke these dead spirits to come and look favorably upon their crops and their gods. God in Deuteronomy 7 from verse one to 10 commanded the Israelites against the practices and associations of the Hittites. And I want to read that because it is important for us to know what the word of the Lord says and to understand that it is not a denominational thing, but it is a mandate from the Lord. The Lord says, when the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, Remember, we told you we are looking at Ittite, where the Ittite culture, which is where Halloween starts from. And this is present day Turkey. The Ittites and the Gershasites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Evites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant which is having an agreement, coming into agreement with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Their, thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy you suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them, ye shall destroy their altars, break down their images, and cut down their groves, burn their graven images with fire, for thou art an holy people unto Lord, the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto him, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people. For you were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you and because you would keep the hold which he had sworn unto your fathers that the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him. Now, one of the things we have to understand is that the, when you, you see the word loving God, it's associated with obedience. If you love God, you have to be obedient unto him. And so he says, do not do what the Hittites are doing, which involves 
these celebrations unto their gods and invoking their spirits again this is the very beginning the very foundation of halloween now halloween is continued on and we are going to be looking at the set of people that really made it popular in our modern culture the celts they were a collection of tribes with origins in central europe that shared a similar language religious beliefs traditions and cultures it's believed that the celtic culture started to evolve as early as 1200 bc the celts spread throughout western europe including britain ireland france and spain so can via migration so contrary to popular belief they did not originate in ireland they actually migrated there and again they are a collection of tribes remember deuteronomy 7 verse 1 just listed seven different tribes that came together with similar language religious beliefs traditions and cultures right their legacy remains most prominent in ireland and great britain where traces of their language and culture are still prominent today. The existence of the Celts was first documented in the 7th or 8th century BC. The Roman Empire, which ruled much of Southern Europe at that time, referred to the Celts as Gali. Now that is where you get Gahil or Gaul or Galatia from. Its meaning is meant barbarians. So at the time when our bible was translated into the septuagint this is why we would have the reference of barbarians as paul wrote to his epistles to the church in the book of the new books of the new testament it is speaking about the same celts it's speaking about the same Gali. it's speaking about the same gal it's speaking about the same gal it is the galatians they were the celts all right, so I want you to understand that Paul dealt with it, we are dealing with it today, and it was even before. Sowing is where, so now the Celts, again, they took up this, this belief that the, the Ittites had introduced for Halloween because they were dwelling in that location that is now central Anatolia. They were a people that were dwelling in that time. They involved a collection of tribes, all seven tribes. And out of that, now they started to migrate, go to Britain, to Ireland, to France, to Spain, right? Via migration. That is why you find, and I want to go back to there. If you notice, Mexico, Spanish country, China, Asia, Galatia, Europe, Catholicism, Rome, Britain, and parts of Europe. Notice the stronghold still remains there where Halloween is concerned. All right. One of the things that the Celts did was to bring in what is called sowing. It is spelled S A M H A I N, but it is pronounced so in. And so it is so in because it's speaking about grains and the time when you would have a sowing. This culture was passed on to the Celts, the Gauls, Gahels, Galatians, Barbarians, any name you want to call them, who we know today as Galatia or Central Anatolia. It was to celebrate the Celtic New Year, which marked the ending of harvest and the beginning of winter. It's referred to as the dark half of the year. So it means summer's end. The Celts believe that the veil between the worlds of the living. So you see, it goes much deeper than crop. It goes much deeper than a celebration. It goes much deeper than festivities. They believed that the veil between the worlds of the living and the dead were finished at this time. And so the dead could return and walk where they had before. Further, those who had died in the past year and who for one reason or another had not yet moved on, according to them, could do so at this time and might interact with the living in saying goodbye. So what they were looking for was interaction because again, they wanted their crops to be blessed and they felt like these, this was a way that it would be blessed. 
No one wanted to understand that if there's a veil between worlds, it would have meant that they would have needed to be tapping into a principality. And that is why they would summon their gods in order to try to summon these souls. Now I want you to understand that when dead people die, they can take nothing with them and they do not return to say goodbye. Psalm 49 and verse 17 states it this way. For when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. That is not something that is biblical. That is not something that is uh, truthful. This is them tapping into a realm and into things that they have no business tapping into. And so it becomes a profane thing. It becomes a corrupted thing. So I want you to understand that the very celebration of this thing is taking part. It's coming into covenant with this type of an association. Now, because the Celts believed that the barrier between worlds was breachable during sowing, they prepared offerings that were left outside villages and fields for fairies or sids. It was expected that ancestors might cross over during this time as well, and Celts would dress as animals and monsters so that fairies were not tempted to kidnap them, associate, and this was associated to their mythology, right? Such mythologies as Puka, Lady Gwyn, Bulahan, riding red flame-eyed horses, fairy host, and slower. So the dressing up in costumes was done with the intent that when these spirits came, they would not kidnap them. It wasn't in no celebration, it was an occultic practice, and this was according to an occultic belief. Now, we want you to understand that there is no crossing over once a soul has departed. You're not, you, we have no ability to free no soul and help no soul to cross over to anywhere. Those that are, are dead are awaiting, those that will be risen unto life are awaiting the trump of God and the, the, the call of the living God. That's what. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17 refers to, to the carting up. We call it the rapture because that's a Latin word that was used for caught up, right? But there is no transitioning from one realm to the next. We have to wait for the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I don't have the power to transition any dead soul from death to life. Psalm 49 and verse 19 says, He shall go to the generation of his fathers, they shall never see light. So they are held in that place until the Lord Jesus says so. None of us has the ability to cross over anyone. Now, this is what the ritualistic practices of the Celts and the Ittites would have looked like. You may see this in many traditional practices in occultic movements. If you notice, this man is dressed like a leopard and the white here is to represent the, the teeth and the jaw of the leopard. He's showing that he has the, the, the feathers and in essence, he is projecting himself as a predator, as one that is swift and that is quick, right? So that's what they would do, dress in costumes and stuff as a way of warding off these spirits from kidnapping them. That is where the scarecrow and all of that came from. It is a Celtic practice or a Celtic. Some people say Celtic. It's a Celtic or a Celtic practice. All right. Now, after the harvest work was complete, celebrants joined with Druids. Druids were before the Celtic. The Celtics came, the our Celtics, they came. And what they did was to go in association with the Ittite culture and the Druids practice. Druids consisted of priests, wizards, and ovates. Ovates were witches. They consisted of witches of the groves, those who would uh, prostitute themselves, open up themselves for orgies so that they could devin and prophesy. They would have some sort of sexual encounters with trees and all make natural things and animals. And then a part of the ovate is also nymphs. That's what you call. Uh, which is of the marine kingdom and stuff like that. So all of these druids consisted of these things. They had priests and wizards that were wizards of Baals, right? Those type of high priest kind of things in 
the occultic movement and what we call ovates. Now, after the harvest work was complete, celebrants joined with Jewels to light a community fire using a wheel that would cause friction and sparks to fl um, spark flames. Now, the wheel was considered a representation of the sun and used to used along with prayers. Remember, these people celebrated and worshipped sun gods, which Israel became a part of. Um, Egypt became a part of and called Ra. And they also worship moon gods, which again, Egypt became a part of and call Selene, right? So they did all of these things because the sun would go down too early for them and they wanted to worship the sun. So they would build their own fire, spark it and send their own prayers and sorts of prophecies and divinations and incantations along with this wheel. Now, by the Middle Ages, they added what is called the Dumb Supper. The tradition of the Dumb Supper be began during um, this Middle Age time here, in which food was consumed by celebrants, but only after inviting ancestors to join them. And this is not ancestors that's alive, but dead spirits. They were giving the families a chance to interact with the spirits until they left following dinner. Children would play games to entertain the dead, while adults would update the dead on the past year's news. That night, which is the, um, October 31st, doors and windows might be left open for the dead to come in and eat cakes that had been left for them. So in other words, they opened their homes, they opened their children, they opened their lives, they opened their tables, which were seen as altars to these spirits. So they were opening up themselves as for possession and as channels to these spirits. Now, the one that would be inv inviting these people to the table would be known as mediums or clairvoyants or um, psychics. Notice they would use their children to play games to entertain the dead. And this is where trick or treat is coming from. And they would give them sweets and food. First Samuel 28, 6 to 13 says this. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him, not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then said Saul unto his servants, seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit. Notice the use, familiar spirit, because it takes a familiar spirit, an unclean spirit, a deafening spirit to do these acts. That I may go to her and inquire of her. And the servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment and went, and two men with him. Notice he's hiding because he knows that this is not godly. And they came to the woman by night. Again, the king is not making himself known because he knows that this activity is outside of the monotheistic beliefs of Israel. And he said, I pray thee, the devon unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up, whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he cut off those that have familiar spirits, and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul swear to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, bring me up Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, be not afraid for what sawest thou. And the woman said to him, I saw one as the son of God ascending out of the earth. The Lord rejected Saul and his reign after he sought out mediums, magic, voodoo, familiar spirits. Those who do these things, the Lord will reject you because he turns away from such things. The Lord has clearly given 
his commands that we need to reject that and we'll look at that later on in Deuteronomy. Now, sowing is one aspect of Halloween. The next aspect is known as the Day of the Dead or El Dia de los Muertos. Sorry. It is a Mexican holiday where families welcome back the souls of their deceased relatives for a brief reunion that includes food, drink, and celebration. If you notice, they're all in agreement. It's just different location calls it different names. This is a blend of Mesoamerican ritual, European religion, and Spanish culture. The holiday is celebrated each year from October 31st to November 2nd. So our, our prayers do not stop people of God on October 31st. We are to continue throughout November 1st and 2nd. While October 31st is Halloween, November 2nd is All Souls Day or the Day of the Dead. According to tradition, the gates of heaven are opened at midnight on October 31st, and the spirits of children can rejoin their families for 24 hours. Now you imagine they are saying these things to persons who don't know the Lord and have lost a loved one. They are going to think that this thing is a good thing, and it is not a good thing. The spirits of adults can do the same on November 2nd. And then on November 1st is what they call All Saints Day. And according to their notice, it is all about dead. They're, they're praying about the, the, the souls of dead saints. We don't need to do that because there's no repentance in the grave. The roots of the Day of the Dead celebrated in contemporary Mexico, which is an Aztec belief, and among those of Mexican heritage in the United States and around the world, go back some 3,000 years to the rituals honoring the dead in pre-Columbian Mesoamerican. And I want to let you know that, you see, the Aztecs, they have associations with the Mayans and with the um, Arans and the Urans. And if you notice, God had charged Joshua and them to eradicate the Urans or Arans and to eradicate the Mayans. And so you find out that there are some of these persons, these cultures, these traditions, these tribes that you cannot find them today because Joshua and Israel had el eliminated them. They had el annihilated them. But some of the tribes of Israel had caused some of these people to survive. And this is where these things, they were first cubs and they have now become lions. So the Aztecs and other Nahua people living in what is now central Mexico held a um, cycli cyclical view of the universe and saw death as an integral, ever-present part of life. So they are trying to mix death with life. Typical Aztec crops included maize, what we call corn, along with beans, squashes, potatoes, tomatoes, and avocados. They also supported themselves through fishing and hunting local ad, um, animals such as rabbits, armadillos, snakes, coyotes, and wild turkey. That is why turkey and uh, pumpkin pie and whatnot of you, all these things are associated with Thanksgiving during the time of November as well. Because, you know, these things are a combination of the things that happen throughout the season of harvest. I want you to understand these things. And they give it a meaning, they give it a name in our modern society, but they have an origin that is very much dark. Now we're going to move on from the Aztecs to now Catholicism. All Saints Day, also called All Allos Day or Alamas or Feast of All Saints in the Christian church, um, as some people would put it, called Catholicism is a day of commemorating all the saints of the church, both known and unknown, who have attained heaven. It is celebrated on November 1st in Western churches and on the first Sunday after Pentecost in the Eastern churches. In Roman Catholicism, the feast is usually a holy day of obligation, so they obligate their believers to do this. All Saints Day is a solemn holiday of the Catholic Church celebrated all annually on November 1st. The day is dedicated to the saints of the church, that is, all those who have attained heaven. 
It should not be confused with All Souls Day, which is observed on November 2nd and is dedicated to those who have died and not yet reached heaven. Again, understand that the saints that have died are waiting on the trump of God to sound. We do not have the ability to pray anyone through in death, for in death there is no re repentance. First Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18 says it this way. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. And I want to speak this to those of you who have lost a loved one. Brethren, concerning them which are asleep, and I'm talking about the loved ones who are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Ghost, and have repented of their sins, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. It's the same word as dead. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. They have not yet risen. We are waiting on the trump of God. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the year. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. We want you to understand that this is a false practice. This is not biblical. And this is anti-Christ. All Souls Day is a holy day set aside for honoring the dead. The dead is primarily celebrated in the Catholic Church, but it is also celebrated in the Eastern Orthodox Church and a few other denominations of Christianity. We have come to tell you that those of you that are doing these things, the, the practice of Halloween, All Souls Day, All Saints Day, this is error. The Anglican Church is the largest Protestant church to celebrate the Holy Day. Most Protestant denominations do not recognize the Holy Day and disagree with the theology behind it. According to Catholic, um, Catholic belief, the soul of a person who dies sorry about that, the soul of a person who dies can go to one of three places. The first is heaven, where a person who dies is in a state of perfect grace and communion with God goes. The second is hell, where those who die in a state of mortal sin are naturally condemned by their choice. And the intermediate, that's the in-between option is purgatory, which is thought to be where most people free of mortal sin, but still in a state of lesser venial sin must go. Those are all false doctrine. There are two um, outcomes after death the Bible speaks about. It is either you will be resurrected and you will be living with the Lord in his millennial reign and the new Jerusalem, or you will be cast into the lake of fire because of your choices. There is no in-between. There is no three options. There is two things that will happen. The will of the Lord is for us to be with him forevermore in heaven. But our choices for the, the, the wages of sin is death can lead us to hell. So all of this is not scriptural. It is not something that the Lord has approved. All Souls Day in Roman Catholicism is a day of commemoration of all the faithful, faithfully departed, those baptized Christians who are believed to be in purgatory because they died with the guilt of lesser sins on their souls. There is no lesser or greater sin. It is observed on November 2nd. Roman Catholic doctrine holds that the prayers of the faithful on earth will help cleanse these souls in order to fit them for the vision of God in heaven. And the day is dedicated to prayer and remembrance. People of the living God, please understand that you cannot go through the dead. There's, you cannot pray, sorry, you cannot pray through the dead. There is no repentance in the grave. I keep saying this because it is so. Hebrews 9, 27 to 28 says it this way. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, 
And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Salvation is for the living and not for the dead. One of the things that we recognize that Halloween is promoting is a polygamous or sexual experimenting. A polygamous um, person is one who has more than one mate. It is from two words, poly, meaning multiple, and gamme, meaning marriage to take a wife. The man is known as the polygyny, or poly again meaning many, multiple, guinea or gin, which is where Lady Gwen would be coming from in the Celtic belief, is a woman or a wife. Guinea is the same from Gwen in Greek, and it is known as a woman or wife in the Old English, but it also means queen, ruler of a state or wife. It is a principality. That principality is known as Jezebel. That's a spirit called Jezebel. The educational system and systems of the world is in promotion of such apps. And I read a couple um, excerpts from Jamaica, from Cleveland, and from Florida, where we see where these agendas are being pushed. This is something that is being prayed into existence right now during this Halloween um, season. One of the things that witches and warlocks are trying to get is prayers out of schools. And so we have to understand that we are praying against these ungodly antichrist legislations. See, one of the, the agendas is called spiritual cooking. When you hear about spiritual cooking, you would think that it has to do with food. It does not have to do with food. What it is, is a fast that witches and warlocks goes on to promote sexual perversions. And this is one of the agenda in this time. So the educational system has a strong man that's associated to it, that wants to give children the liberty to, to, to explore sexual acts. And it's giving them the liberty and the freedom to not abstain from sex, but to use contraceptives. That's what they want the schools to be teaching their children right now. And if you're going to be teaching about um, pregnancy or, or family planning measures, you're not to talk anything without talking about abortion. So they want to abort children as well yet let's continue a polygamous relationship or sexual experimenting is grounds for divorce and a splitting of assets and the very leading cause of a broken home and family in our present day society so if this thing is bad in court why is it that you're teaching them in the educational system that it's okay to do that we know that according to the word of God that we should not commit adultery, Exodus 20, 14. And every court in the judicial system operates by this command. All fornicators or sexually immoral persons will have their part in the lake of fire if they have not repented, according to Revelations 21 and verse 8. And Romans 1, 16 to 32, that speaks about the perversion that people do in their body, homosexuality, lesbianism, bisexualism, transgenderism, all the things that is being prayed right now by these witches and warlocks. And so we are asking you to be mindful of these things when you go into prayer today as we pray against the spirit of Halloween. I want to close with this scripture because this is not us saying it, this is the Lord God Almighty saying it. Deuteronomy 18, 9 to 13. And as a matter of fact, let me find it and put it up on the screen so that your eyes can behold what your ears is hearing. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. 
Again, there shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire that is offering them unto Molech or that useth divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter of familiar spirits. That's the same as a medium, a psychic or a gypsy or a wizard or a necromancer. A necromancer, we know what that is. That's those that invoke spirits. It's called science. It's called voodoo. It's called obia. Want to read that once more, verse 10 and 11. There shall not be found among you any that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that use divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. And so today there is a mandate on the church to be separate and apart. The Lord has called us unto perfection. And that perfection also has to do with our beliefs and our practices. Today, people of the living God, we are asking you to stand with us in agreement as we pray against these principalities and powers. Understand that legality is what these spirits are looking for. They are looking for um, an, an opportunity to operate in a judicial way with a feudal system where the principality is at the head, the power answers to the principality, rulers of the darkness of this world answers to powers and principality, and spiritual wickedness in high places carries out their agenda. So we're asking you today to join with us in prayer. For this is the will of the Lord to withstand these evil practices on earth, to cover our sons and our daughters, we already see that in South Korea, where the, the tomb sweeping day is a part of Halloween. That's also a practice where they would go and clean out graves during this time. And while they are doing it, they are bringing food and feeding spirits and trying to invoke these spirits. South Korea is a part of that Asian community. And they also practice Halloween. And today we have a report of 154 people dead and 149 injuries this spirit is seeking the blood of our youths of our children and blood in the land at the beginning of october again which is the beginning of the harvest we saw a lot of murders taking place in um the carolinas over one weekend the friday there was five dead for the next day Five again the next day. So they, they use numbers. There, there is a play on numbers. There's a play on five, a play on four, a play on nine, a play on six, a play on three, a play on seven. You have to understand that the demonic realms, they use numbers because this is all they get their multiples. This is all they do, their divinations and their spells and their chantings and stuff. And there is also an agenda against um, education of our children. And so today, people of the living God. We're asking you to join with us as we give you this information. You are no longer guiltless if you do nothing about it. Because so in that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, even to him it is sin. You have the information today. And so we are calling you to act and to do something in the name of Jesus. Evangelist Leota Vassal, I will hand over back to you. Bless the Lord, everyone. I give God thanks for. This presentation today, as I was led to ask Lady Karen Mitchell to do a presentation for us on Halloween and what is behind Halloween. We hear about the word, but we don't know the origin, where it is from, who started it. You know, why is the celebration so great? And you know, why is it as a Christian and as a body of Christ, it's not acceptable for us to partake in such um activity? Right, Praise God. God bless you who just um, spoke. It's going on you. right here. Look. Okay. <laughs> Live celebration. Yes. I understand. 
It's right. Like we're on the day, so that's why I do it on the day. We're fasting and praying on the day. And to show persons the origin of it, that, you know, it's not something to play around with. As Sister Kerry has dropped so many scriptures, so many origin, so many foundations, and so many um supportive um research based on the theme of Halloween. I've learned a lot. I wanted to know more. And I'm going to do my research even more. And I pray that you do your research even more. I see persons on Facebook are intrigued by it also. Sonia Green said, thank you for joining in Sonia Green from Facebook. Very informative news to me. Deep information. Myself too. Um, I see Imari Hendricks is listening. Sister Natalie Hunter was listening earlier. I see God bless you, Deborah Wilson. God bless you for joining in. Um, Akisha Brown. Oh, that is Mrs. Vassal, thanks for joining in. I'm looking for those who are listening. I pray that somebody learned something today. We're on a day of prayer and fasting, but we'll just do it on this twist of giving a presentation of what Halloween is about. You can see it is coming from the Old Testament also. It's, they practice it back in the Bible days also. And I see where the culture is coming in and persons are you know, taking so many participation in it and, and, you know, being happy about it when you're actually evoking spirits and calling spirits to come in as you should show up the sex demons that operate through it. You know, so many things that surround it. You have to rewatch this video to understand. You can share with others, you know, why, you know, Halloween is not so much something that we're supposed to be participating in. You can share with family, you can share with friends. Um, if you have any questions offline, online, you can type your questions in the inbox. Anybody have any questions for Lady Mitchell, you're free to do so to unmute your mic and ask the questions. And we're going to unite in prayer against the spirit that is operating behind Halloween. Here she said that we're not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we don't wrestle against the spirit by flesh and blood and cuss and quarrel and and, and and be ignorant to this. We fight these buckles on our knee. Halloween opens so many portals that we don't even understand. People having parties, people having celebration about it. You know, it's like it's become like the norm, but it's not supposed to be the norm. And that the animals are like it. A lot of agenda operates behind it. You see, it affects those are in Jamaica, the high school in Oberlin. Everybody have it viral. So we can't talk about it because they're all over the place. And the way how we get deliverance for these children, they have to know about Jesus. They have to know about the Holy Spirit. They have to, you have to train up your children and teach them about the kingdom of God. If I, as a child was a grown, not say because I grew up in a church and become a parent of position, why? Me love prayer. I have to know God for myself. And they taught me the word of God. They taught me the scriptures. They taught me the foundation of the Holy Spirit. So if you teach your children the foundation of the anointing of the Holy Spirit of the scriptures, then they're able to um, apply what they learn when they go out there to college, university, in the work world, and they're going to primary school, high school. They have to know about God. They have to know about spiritual warfare. And I realize that <clears throat> anything that deals with spiritual warfare, it's not really talked about that much in our churches too. Um, it's not really talk about what is happening. So you have to understand spiritual warfare. So if anybody have any question, you can ask your question to Sister Lady Mitchell. If you are free to do so. God bless you, Sharon Henry, for joining in. Anybody on Facebook have any question? You can ask your question. Yes, yeah, Sana Greenwood said she will rewatch and share the share the word. Yeah, this needs to be shared. Thank you very much, Lady Mitchell. I have a question. <clears throat> um, this this um this culture of Halloween, I heard it from, when you're small, you hear about it, but when you're smaller, it's like, it sounds like a something when nice, <clears throat> it sounds like a something like in a cartoon, in a music, so it's like trick and treat and whatever about sweetie and whatever you think, so that's what trick and treat and sweetie. <laughs> Okay, you see it on Facebook. Yes, no, not I don't have Facebook back in that time. You see it on cartoon, you see it in movies, so it becomes the norm. So I have a question, like, why is it like it's just been accepted as the norm? And, you know, people just go with it. And, you know, the real child of God is not taking a stand against it. So one of the things that we are finding that's happening is, you know, the word of the Lord tells us how to get rid of principalities and powers. There's a scripture that speaks about us allowing it to grow and becoming. It came from a cub to a lion. Now, one of the things, and I'm going to use the, 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 the natural to try to explain the spiritual. 
one yeah. of the things that you find in the in the animal kingdom the lion that's one of the most powerful predators when yeah. a lion goes into a den to destroy another lion if he kills that lion he kills every male cub after he has killed that lion mm -hmm. and the reason why that lion does that is because there's something called revenge retaliation regrouping if he allows the male cubs male cubs to become lions then they're going to attack him and they're going to kill him because mm -hmm. that that lioness will not be subjected unto him as long as there's a male in that bloodline that can continue on that's how these principalities operated the Hittites were in a time when it was Nimrod and Babylon right are uh, these false gods religions they went and they took over Egypt and they were all over the land of the Lord God Almighty because he separated Israel from Egypt and brought them into that land he now says okay this is a promise that I have given unto you but this is what needs to be done. These people need to be driven out because they're not operating of themselves. They're operating through spirits. Remember, one of the presentation is that these persons would open their doors and their windows for the dead to come in. So in other yeah. words, that's what the Hittites and, and all those seven different, well, 11 of them were doing. They were opening up themselves as channels to these spirits. Now, when these spirits came into them and possessed them, they were capable of all sorts of evil agendas and stuff. Over time, right, Israel allowed these cubs to become lion. Now, when Jezebel came into power, what she started to do now was to make it diplomatic. After Jezebel, that system proceeded. That system went into Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar, and they found a pretty way to advertise it. And one of the prettiest way was through image idol worship, where you would bow to all music and stuff and feast. The thing about Christianity and Judaism is that your table is an altar. So whoever comes and sit at your table, whatever you eat on the table, whatever you discuss on the table, you are coming into agreement and covenant with them. See, the United Nations... They didn't just come up with the, the, the idea of having a table. That was something that was instituted during the time of, of Jezebel. She had a table where all the prophets were gathered together and they ate at that table and they came into agreement at that table. And what that table did was to become stronger than the table of Israel until God used Elijah to rebuild the altar. Now coming down now into Roman times, there is a part of the Roman belief that believes in taking all religion and fusing them. Okay. So as you move from the, the, the time of Jesus down to our time now, we are making it more advertisable. We are making it more delightful, more attractive. And so what we do now is appeal to people's natural senses. And guess what? This is something that started from the Garden of Eden. Remember when the serpent went to Adam and Eve and he said, did God tell you that you would die in the day that you eat of that tree? No, no. God knows that the day that you eat of it, you shall be as gods. And immediately what started to happen was it spoke to the appetite of Eve. When God spoke to her, she had no appetite for it. There was no lust. There was no taste. There was no desire for the, for the knowledge of good and evil. But the moment the evil agenda that of darkness came and created a loss within her. So this is what Halloween does for us today. There is an appetite that it is opening up and it is using trick or treating. It is using sweets to appeal to our children because that's what children love. Children love candy. Children love sweets. Children love to dress up. Children love to play. But they don't know that in playing what they're doing is, is allowing themselves as portals to let these spirits come into them that is why they have all these different things there because it's mirroring the spirits that's really being released another thing i want to add to it is that while all children are eating this candies realize that the agenda of hell has elevated because what they're doing now is that it's not just a spiritual level they are lacing candies with substances that will either cause your children to become high mess yeah. them up totally or put women in a place of vulnerability so that they can assault them sexually yes so it's like it's like it's like it's attacking your purity 
is a, is a portal of attacking purity, basically. So Halloween is just an open portal to attack children's purity and to attack um, parents' purity, but they, they, they sabotage the children. So no, a lot of persons are not aware of that, that the seriousness when it comes to um, Halloween, correct? Anybody else have any question? Thank you very much, Sister Kerry. That was like, um, I understand that. No, this is this this Halloween thing have a deep root. <clears throat> it coming from way back. I don't know something was just you know planned overnight. It just started to get more advanced and more advanced with having technology and more promotion. It just escalated and become like the norm, right? God bless you, everyone. Anybody have any question as it relates to Halloween? Sister Lady Mitchell is on the floor. She did a presentation. I welcome everybody that comes on. Even though you came on late, we have recorded the presentation that you can share with other persons too as it relates to Halloween. We were here on the day of past, fasting and prayer, but I was led to ask her to do a foundation of, you know, what is Halloween about? What is the background of Halloween? Why is it so popular? Or why is it become the norm or the culture for celebrating Halloween? And why is it that us as son of God or child of God is not acceptable for us to partake in such celebration? Praise God. God bless all under Musha. God bless the lady, Burnett, Sister Shav. God bless you, Christopher Jackson. God bless you, Janelle Jackson. Those are online. Do you have any questions for Sister Carrie Mitchell? If not, we're going to go forward and pray coverage over our children, over our families in this watch. God bless you for joining in, Marvia Simmons. God bless you for joining in, Marva Fagan. God bless you for, for um, logging on, Evangelist and Marie on Facebook. God bless you, Elder Gary McDonald on Facebook. God bless you all. We are joining in. Sonia Greenwood, do you have any question? You can go ahead. Anything you'd like to ask about Halloween? Any clarification that you want? We're moving forward in Jesus' name. Today is a day of the anointing. Today is a day of Holy Ghost Day. Today is a day that the day that the Lord has made. October 31st belongs to Jesus in Jesus' name. God bless you. Anybody have any question? If there's any prayer request, you can go ahead and send your request. Okay, Arlando Mushet said, very powerful message. Anything you learned, Arlando, that you'd like to type? Anything anybody learned from this short presentation of um the origin of Halloween, where it's coming from? If you can't talk, you can type, Arlando. <laughs> yes, Sister Chevron is asking prayer requests for salvation in this time. We'll take note, yes. Anybody like to say anything that they learn? Any prayer requests? You can share this live with somebody else. Praise God. We welcome each and every person today. Any other prayer requests? You can go ahead and send your prayer requests. If you have missed the presentation, you can rewatch in your spare time in Jesus' name. But we're here declaring the word of the Lord in this watch. Amen. Anything else you'd like to add, Sister Curry? Yes. I, I, I had this element that I wanted to add that. When Rome dominated Galatia and all those other areas, Anatolia and those areas, what yeah. they did was they thought, right, Catholicism thought that in order to win these souls, we are going to incorporate their worship. And that is where All Souls Day and All Saints Day really come from, right? Okay. They added those two days to Halloween. I mm. want to say to the churches out there, those of you that are Holy Ghost still baptized in the name of Jesus, preaching the truth, stop trying to use man-made traditions to win souls. You don't need that. All you need is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You do not need to incorporate any form of harvest because what you're actually doing is corrupting the truth of God. We do not mix. We do not compromise and dilute the Amen. word of God. If God said, don't do it, do not have them in our midst. We do not have them. Or children, do you know that children are very smart? Children yeah. are very smart. If you say to them that we don't do it for this reason and you show it to them and you're yeah, not lying to them. Why yes. and why? Yeah. Cecily, if you do that, then they are going to, they are going to understand and they're not going to want to be a part of it. But the yeah. thing of it is that sometimes we say you're not celebrating and we don't speak to them like they why? have um, understanding. Tell them yeah. why. Yeah. And they'll know because no child wants to know that they're doing what is anti-God. No child wants to know that they're doing that. So make sure that you're telling your children, stop thinking about them feeling um, 
like an outcast because God told us to be separate. That's what he said. We are set above, set apart people. That's what sanctified and holy means, that we are set apart. So we need to stop doing these things. Please stop incorporating them into church services because it is not godly. It is anti-God. And God no need no help. God a fire by himself. Praise God. So please take note of that. Um, Sonny Greenwood said, the parents need to be informed about this. We need to reach the parents and let they know to and educate them to know, you know, why their children can participate in certain stuff, right? Especially as a child of God. Thank you very much, Sister Sonia. And she's asking prayer for her family. I will take note of that. That her husband will be baptized in Jesus' name. Praise God. Any other prayer requests? Go ahead. Um, um, who is this? A DJ G G M A C McDonald. That's his name. Go ahead, sir. Your hands is up. Do you like to ask a question? Go ahead. We're not hearing you. Okay, are you hearing me now? Yes, hearing you now. Yes, I just wanted to say, um, you know, with the Halloween, we yes. did like uh, teaching in our church, the same thing that Sister Michelle is doing here yes. with the young people. And being a parent, it was one of the hardest things um, when my kids were younger and going to school. Yeah. Let them know that we don't celebrate Halloween and we don't take part in it because the school started out with a book character day, not mm. Halloween. They started with a book character day, which was a different day from Halloween. But it takes time and drop closer and closer to Halloween. Yeah. And um, by the time they get to Halloween now, they change the book character day to put it on Halloween. And, you know, I had to take my kids when they were young and say, we don't take part in this. And from the Bible, taught them why we don't do it. And they have never dressed in costume, go to school. They have never gone trick-or-treating or anything like that. We don't celebrate it. But as um, Lady Mitchell said, it's something that you have to teach. You just don't say we don't do it. I'm, yes. I'm at work and people are telling me happy Halloween. I said, I won't have one because I don't celebrate Halloween. Yeah. I, you know, I just, I'm right in the midst of it right now. Yes, the parade, yes. you know, 100 witches on bike and everything out here celebrating. Okay. And the parent would tell me happy Halloween. And I said, I don't celebrate Halloween. And they was like, why? I said, there's nothing good about Halloween. Look on your lawns. There's <laughs> scarecrow, there is vampires, there is coffins, there is neck chopping off with blood drain. What is so good about that? What is that, you know, so it's something that um, some Christians, because I know even pastors yes. who dress their kids and say it look cute and because they enjoy it, but they don't believe in it, but it look cute. Why yeah. you take part in it? The you're you're of it. Too. So it's done away with none of us. We don't dress our kids. We don't partake. We don't go trick-or-treating. And also we don't put any candy out either. Because some people say they don't take part, but they put candy outside. We don't take no part of it because it's just devilish. It's yes. just satanic. Everything about it, right? Yes. And it's something that um, we have to understand that um, it's something that we have to cry against, but it's not something that is going to go away. Yeah, yes, yes. But it's something that we have to cry against that those who might be edified and be saved will be saved. But we have to realize in this time, nothing on this earth that is evil is going to go away until God Himself come. But it's our duty to cry against it. That's what he said to Ezekiel. Cry against the abomination, whether they hear or they forbear. But we have to continue. Um, and, you know, it was good joining this program today. I saw the link and I saw the invitation and I said, no, let me join it. And it was very yes. good. And I think uh, more, a lot of churches should have this teaching. You know, we did it in our youth department. They should have it and, yes. and let the kids understand. You know, it's not just cute. Yes, the costume, look, dressing up like a character and everything. To the kids, that's amazing. Yeah. You know, somebody wants to dress up like Buzz Lightyear or anything like that. It's amazing wow. to them. I look at the little kids here. The parents take time off work, and they're at the school marching with them. And if it's something else, they can't go. You know, I will live in a society when I see and I look how many young people out here don't know God, don't have nothing to do with God, but the parents will take time off for them to go march in Halloween. You know, so we're living in we're living in perilous time, and you know, I'm I'm glad that there's an arm that is using social media, you know, and not being afraid of um, what people will say yeah. and who will stop following all that. We're not in this for followers. We're in this mm -hmm. for people to come and know Christ. So God bless you, Lady Mitchell and Lady Vassal, in Jesus' name.
God bless you, Elder McDonald, and thank you for your input, and thank you as an elder coming out to encourage us as young people. Thank you very much in Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you for that input. We're edified. Yes, so parents, teach your children why. As Lady Karen Mitchell said, don't just tell them, so don't do this, don't do that. Show them the reason why. Show them the scriptural references. You know, show them the historic background. Do your own research if you don't know much. I have to do my own research too. I'm learning more. So you build on the foundation of learning. You understand? Sometimes, you know, your church might not be teaching much about it. But if you have gotten the opportunity and hear it, it's for you to do the research and educate your church family and educate your family and those who are around you. You, you might be the owner that seems stupid, but, you know, you are following the kingdom principle. Because at the end of the day, God can come for Halloween day. You know, you don't know. God can come any day. You just want to be pure. You're meant to be pure. And you're always at the feet of Jesus. God bless you during watch so for joining in. God bless you, Lady Dennis from Waterloo Apostolic Church. Thanks for joining in. If there's any question, any input, you can add your input, whether by typing or by typing on Facebook or on Zoom. You can go ahead. We're not in any rush. We're here for you today in Jesus' name. Any prayer requests, any question you have for Lady Mitchell, go ahead in Jesus' name. Yes, Doreen Wilson said, well said. God bless you. Thank you for your input. Thank you for your input, everyone. If there's any prayer requests, you can send a request also in Jesus' name. Praise God. The scriptural references. Somebody asked earlier for um, what scripture were we speaking from? Sonny Greenwood, you mentioned that earlier. Um, Sister Karen Mitchell has been you know, adding a lot of scripture. So I believe that you have to rewatch the video also to see what scripture has been applied to what she has been speaking about and so on. Um, is there any important scripture that you want to reinforce, um, Sister Karen Mitchell, as it relates to Halloween to reinforce it? Yes. Um, Deuteronomy 18, 9 to 13, you want to um hold on to that one. And for those of you that would like the PowerPoint presentation. Just send your email address, contact Sister Lee, and we'll send it out to you. All right? So anyone who wants it, it's available. The, all the references are there from where the information is coming from, and there are additional information as well because there are other websites that's not on there um, that we got information for. So from. So we'll send it to you so that you can find it. It's all reliable sources right yes so anyone who wants a scriptures powerpoint presentation feel free to contact evangelist leota all right so i'm typing my email leota g at gmail.com i place it in the chat if you like the powerpoint presentation on halloween and i have another email also gabriel mushet at yahoo.com gabriel mushet it's typed there in the chat at yahoo.com all right so if you need more information more scriptural references if you want to show your children or any young people anybody out there in their youth department and so on want to show them why um it's not godly for us to participate in halloween you can get information from me and i'll send it to you it's in the zoom chat it's in the facebook chat and also i'll be sending this recording also on my youtube page which is Leo Tavasso on YouTube. I'll send it to you all in Jesus' name. This information should spread across the world of why we should not participate in Halloween. So we're just going to unite in prayer. There's no more prayer requests and no more questions. We're going to pray coverage over our children because I believe that Halloween is actually targeting the purity of our children. You understand me? And um, it's targeting the parents too to confuse them. And as um, Elder Gary McDonald said, people making big sacrifice for Halloween day, when you come to other important priorities, that sacrifice is not made. So, and even with um with our presentation um and rebuilding the altars, you're rebuilding your altars, and we are here using the altars for the glory of God. And the other persons in the dark world are using their altars 24-7 because there's no time stop with altars. So the Lord wants us to rebuild our altars. If as a family, as a parents, we are rebuilding our altar and we are at the feet of Jesus. We would not have any type of desire to participate in such thing if you have such a connection with the kingdom of God. Yes, I know that systems out there implemented in the school, in your work, in your workplaces, and so on. But 
the righteousness inside of you now go on participate in there. If you are at the feet of Jesus and you said you're a son of God, you're a child of God, because there's nothing godly about it. It is actually an insult. I believe it's actually an insult against us as child of God. It's like you're saying, um, as a, as a child of God, I'm going to participate in this thing for us one day, but you sin because sin has sin because that have no glory. It didn't give God no glory. There's no glory in Halloween of God. It is like it's like celebrating the kingdom of darkness. It's like celebrating satanic practices. It's like celebrating and grinning with the witches and warlocks, which you go and fasten and pray for every day, and you celebrate with the dark world. You know, it just um not logical. <laughs> it's not logical. Light is light. Darkness is darkness. Darkness is the opposite of light. Oil cannot um, um, fix with water. <laughs> there's no connection. You understand me? That's what I'm trying to reinforce and tell everybody. There's nothing happy about Halloween for a son of God. You understand me? The people who are not saved, they're not really understand. But who know better, be the example. Do better. Educate our children, especially our children who are baptized in Jesus' name, full of the Holy Ghost. Our children who are a part of the kingdom of God. Educate them. Let them know what where it is coming from and why you can't participate in it. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and pray. I see Sister Sonia sending requests for her, um, her unsaved children. We're going to put them before the Lord. We're going to place Oberlin High School before the Lord again. And any other school under attack with any um, demonic forces of darkness, we're shutting it down in the name of Jesus. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principles, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes, um, Sister Shaf sent a request that she need prayers for salvation for everyone. Um, somebody's having pain in their lower back. Okay, we're going to pray for you, um, Missionary Brooks. We're going to pray against that pain. First, I've been sending requests that they're not feeling well today. I want to pray against sickness. First, is they're sending requests for their marriage. We're going to pray for our marriage today in Jesus' name. So you can continue sending your requests. We're going into prayers. If you have your olive oil, you anoint yourself. Anyway, if you're at home, if you can't anoint yourself at home, we'll send in a gift for you. So I'm going to sing this song. In God's presence, there's fullness of joy. And at thy right hand, that purchase forevermore. And um, we're going to unite in prayer. If you can unmute your mic and pray together, you can. If you can't, I totally understand. So I'm going to sing this song. In God's presence, there is fullness of joy. In Jesus' name. In God's presence, there is fullness of joy. At His right hand, there are pleasures for I am his and he is mine in the presence of the Lord there's fullness of joy. Are you there, Lisa? Yes, sir. Sorry about that. God bless you. In God's presence, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, you can send a request, everyone. There are pledges for us. The more. Oh, what fellowship divine! I am His, and He is mine. In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy.
there is fullness of John at his right hand. There are pleasures for Joseph, I to tell him thanks for today. Thanks for waking up this morning. You're right, man. He's awesome. He gave us a life. He gave us strength to face another day. Today is Monday, the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your words. Thank you for your scriptures. Thank you for this presentation today. Thank you for educating us today about your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for giving clarification today. Thank you for everybody's input today at this time, Lord. We acknowledge you because you're the kings of kings. You're the Lord of Lord. Lord, anoint our hands to our feet to fight, Lord. Shift our atmosphere today. Shift our atmosphere. Shift the secure atmosphere. Sister sharp atmosphere. Shift Jody atmosphere, shift Sister Dennis atmosphere, shift Elder Gears atmosphere, shift General Jackson atmosphere, shift Arlanda Mushet atmosphere, shift Sonna Greenwood atmosphere, Lord, shift Evangelist Coda atmosphere, shift um, Sister Linux atmosphere in England, yes, let there be a shift in the UK right now, let there be a shift in Brooklyn, let there be a shift in Connecticut, let there be a shift in Florida, Lord, let there be a shift in Jamaica, let there be a shift in the Caribbean countries at this time, shift our atmosphere, Lord, we give God thanks for the angels that are sending us Yes, right now. Thank you, Lord, for answering every yes. prayer yes. before we yes, even ask God. right now. Amen. In the Jesus. name of Jesus, cover us under your blood. Break every chain today at this time, O oh Lord. Jesus. Destroy yes. every yoke of bondage today at this time, Lord. Yes, Pull up somebody's God. spirit and strengthen them today. Help us not to be clouded by the darkness that is operating against our people, Lord. Help us not to be distracted in this season at this time, but stay at your feet, Lord. Hallelujah. Strengthen us today. Cover our minds, cover our body, cover our soul at this time, Lord. Yes, Lord, whoever is to get this information information, Father, release it to them right now. Yes, Lord, Lord cover the minds Father, of our parents at this time. Cover the minds of our children, the enemies Lord, after the priest of our children. Lord, cover them and their blood. Our teachers, Lord, cover our principals right now, Jesus. Hallelujah. Cover our hands to our feet. Cover our vehicles right now. Cover those who are driving on the road right now. Cover those who are at work. Yes, Lord, cover those who are traveling from different countries at this time. Cover those who are in the train, in the bus, in the taxi, Lord. Over and those at this time, what to do their business in the at this time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that we exalt your name. We'll lift you up on high. You deserve the glory of the first situation. You are the kings of kings, you're the Lord of Lord, you're the land of tribes of Judah. Uplift our spirit today at this time, Lord. Help us to come to move forward. Help us to press forward from glory to glory. Help us at this time, Lord, you have to strengthen those who feel weak in the faith, Lord. Hallelujah. Have us on their blood. Shift into our minds. They said, be transformed by the renewing of our men, renew our men today, Lord. No, Lord. Stay in your word, stay in fasting, stay in prayer. The Lord, we're staying at the feet of Jesus, we're staying at the altar this time. Fix us at the altar today, Jesus. Hallelujah, we give God thanks for what you're doing. Elevate those who feel discouraged right now. We're buying suicidal spirit, we're buying depression, we're buying lies at this time, we're buying ever works of the flesh, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let your presence be felt at this time across the world. Yes, Lord, we're raising up at this time, Lord Jesus, we're raising up a standard against the works of darkness at this time. In the name of Jesus, strengthen us today, Lord. Help us to move forward at this time from glory to glory. We are awesome in this place, Lord. Every word that was uttered out in the atmosphere. Yes, Lord, we thank you for your knowledge. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your understanding. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. We come and heal in this time for those who are sick. I need to cover myself and Brother Stephen and family. Remember my parents, oh Lord, cover them on your blood. The name of Jesus, cover this time, Lord Jesus. 
so when Jesus said, Lord, and she in just did a presentation, Lord, 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 that Lord, that Lord, that Lord, 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 in the name Lord, of Jesus, Lord, the child will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and our hands to war, and our feet to fight, in the name of Jesus, every single pans of war that rise up against the Spirit, we shut it down, in the mighty name of Jesus, cover us under your blood, cover our family at this time, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the Supreme Sister, the request of being stressed out and depressed, but by the pressure today, Lord Jesus, we come and heal in a missionary book, back, Lord, and we pray that she feel in her back will come and let you go in the name of Jesus. We tear down the stronghold of the enemy at this time, Lord. We send angels into the UK and we shut down the attack launch against her. Strengthen the evangelist code that she was able to be on. Strengthen her at this time, Lord. As she take her rest at this time, Lord. Cover Sister Shabona, give her thanks for able to come on. Cover her brother and her husband and family. Let the attack launch against her and her marriage shut it down. Cover my marriage. I see where a lot of requests are falling with marriage. We bind every summer thought against us. And that's why they can make a good communication, Lord. Cover the stem, Lord, every marriage at this time. Cover every marriage couple. Cover every single at this time, Lord, that is under attack. Yes, the enemy is distracting our singles at this time, Lord. Hallelujah, so many distractions at this time. Pull them up, so many things discouraged, Lord. But strengthen our singles today, Lord Jesus. Cover at this time, our land of Musha, to give the cancer able to come on. Strengthen our land today. Every spirit that fights against our land, we shut it down at this time. Cover my dear brother and a single person. And elevate it, Lord. Cover at this time, Lord Jesus. Jay Jackson, give God thanks. They should be able to come on to this presentation. Cover their blood. Cover at this time, Sister Dennis, at this time, Lord. All the way to the world, to strengthen her. Cover her husband, Lord. Timothy, to cover their marriage at this time. Yes, I was about to tell that you're lying to this marriage today. We shut it down at this time. Tear down the foundation of hell. Remember, at this time, Sonia Greenwood wants her children to be saved. Cover Sonia Greenwood's family at this time. Every attack launched against our family was shut it down. We declare the creep, Lord God, Almighty, that this generation will have you, Lord God, a remnant that will know you, Lord God, that will know your name of Jesus, Lord God, that will declare it, Lord God, and the rays of Jesus on children, Lord God, that are determined and determined for you, Lord God, and to cover the minds of our children, to cover their health, to cover their bodies, to cover their minds, to cover their souls, Lord God, that we pray that and family, cover by the chase and family, cover by the Kenra and family, in the name of Jesus, cover all our families, Lord, cover Sister Charlene and her family, every summer time, Lord, against the Charlene, shut it down, in the name of Jesus, summer asking for financial release, Lord, release financial and bring forth for somebody today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, release financial and bring forth for somebody today, Lord, release financial and bring forth for somebody today, Lord, release financial and bring forth for somebody today, Lord, release financial and bring forth for somebody today, Lord, release financial and bring forth for somebody today, Lord, release financial and bring forth for somebody today, Lord, release financial and bring forth for somebody today, Lord, release financial and bring forth for somebody today, Lord, release financial and bring forth for somebody to university and colleges at this dark time. Many of our students are under attack mentally. Many of our students are under attack academically, socially, and financially. Strengthen our students today. Strengthen our boys. Strengthen our girls. Those are in primary school. High school. Strengthen our students today. 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 Lord, that I might have repentance, Lord Jesus, that you know, that I might be turned away from the things, Lord Jesus, that he has done, Lord God, and to allow your will to be done, Lord Jesus, night to God, we build that. Hey, Lord Jesus, Jesus mighty God, we come, against we come against doubt, we come against fear, we come against work, we come against pride. Lord God, I might be clear and be clear, your son, Lord God, we speak your word, God, and we can receive you, Lord, Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ. Mighty God, we come against every satanic agenda, we come against every Aronin agenda, we come against, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, God, I might be over and manifesting themselves, Lord Jesus, trying, Lord God, I might be pollute the homes, God, trying to pollute our communities, God, trying to pollute the churches, God, trying to pollute the Churches that try to pollute the spiritual system, God. The blood of Jesus against health agendas and lies, Lord God. Father, we command your mechanisms shut down tonight, Lord God. Empower your people, God. Empower your children, God. Cover them under your blood, God. Lead them and poor. Let your sons and your daughters be children and nephews. Cover them under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Night to God, we pray, Lord God, that you lead the schools for the children. We pray your coverage over them, God. Be with them, Lord God. We're going to make you take trouble back. 
home, Lord God. Be with them, Lord God, at the their lunch breaks, Lord God. Be with them at the tables, Lord God. Be with them in the classrooms, God. Be with our children, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, Lord God, Almighty. It's your will, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, for all men to be saved, God. So even now, Lord Jesus, we pray a spirit of deliverance, Lord Jesus, that so that this time we're coming to salvation, Lord God. Mighty God, we're calling them from the east, from the west, from the south, from the north, Lord God. Lord God, that there be an outpouring, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, divine relief, divine relief,
fear will come again so that is trapping down our young people they'll do well they'll be successful they'll be the head of their class so by the spirit of intimidation that is attacking them they'll do well in their match they'll do well in their english they'll do well in whatever area that they want to study yes lord our university students under pressure but god send help to somebody they're not able to pay their tuition but make a way where there seems to be no way some are on scholarship at this time we give our thanks for them help them to continue to maintain their scholarship and maintain their gpa in the name of jesus nobody great will go down today but we'll ban those attack against those people but we'll ban those attack against our children but we'll ban those attacks of academical failure none of our children will fail today in the name of Jesus, send angels into the examination room, whether they're doing exam online, or they're doing exam, Lord, face to face, cover them on their blood, cover their hands, cover their computer, cover their phone, in the name of Jesus, cover the content that they're studying, Lord Jesus, the teachers who are having struggle in the classroom, Lord, will call for clarification, will you can declare kind of success in the classroom at this time, no distraction, no sabotage today, will cut them every shootout today, no blood sacrifice today, in the name of Jesus, sit upon the teachers, sit upon the students at this time, no more demonical attack at this time, Lord, let our children be saved, I want to say thank you for what you're doing, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If anybody is able to anoint themselves, anoint yourself and cover your mind. And as we anoint our head, I'm standing in the gap for other children and other students who are under attack that their minds are covered in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for praying, Sister Karen. If there's anybody that's have any prayer requests, you can send your prayer requests. Praise God. Is anybody led to pray? They can notify in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We give God thanks for what he's doing in this watch and what he's about to do. We give God thanks for those who are able to join in and we will send the information about Halloween to you. My email is gabrielmushet at yahoo.com. I send it in the chat <clears throat> and my email is leotagwebert at gmail.com. God bless you everyone in Jesus name. And tonight we're going to have a part two. We're going to have a praise and worship session from nine to midnight we're just going to worship the lord and we're going to pray just worship and pray and ship our atmosphere tonight you can send the link to others the same link and the same zoom platform same facebook platform and we'll be worshiping the lord tonight from nine to midnight you can send the link to somebody invite somebody let us worship the lord today we did a presentation on halloween we did teaching today and tonight we'll be worshiped Praise God. Anybody um would like to come, you can notify. Any prayer request, you can notify. Yes, I will send it to you, Sister Deborah. Yes, you can. Um, yes, I will send in my email. Anybody else that need the information about Halloween, please educate your children. Please educate your youth departments. Anybody would like to pass on information to, you can check my email. I can give out my email to you or personally inbox me on Facebook if you like the information about the Halloween and why it is not um, acceptable for us as believers to participate in such activity. I pray everybody have a blessed day and God bless everyone for joining in. God bless you. Um, Shadeen Buchanan, God bless you for joining in and those who are able to come on. God bless you. God bless you, Father Vassal. God bless you for joining in. We're just about to close off. You can re-watch this um, Facebook um, teaching. God bless you, everyone, in Jesus' name.